Hey guys, Super Bro Mike here, and in today's video, as you can see, we are back playing Bendy and the Ink Machine. Now, I haven't done a playthrough of this game in a couple of years now, and I figured this was the sort of perfect time to jump back into the game, revisit it one last time before we get Bendy and the Dark Revival, which will either be in the next few months if they're still aiming for 2020, or perhaps earlier next year. We don't know for sure, but either way, I thought this is a perfect time to revisit the original game, sort of go through the levels, but also not just play through it, do a bit of theory talk and what we now know about the story and the characters, you know, explore the lore, reminisce on some of my favourite moments and just generally enjoy the game one last time. So I hope you'll enjoy the ride with me. We're going to do one chapter per time so it'll be five videos and start of course with chapter one. So that'll be the video for today guys. Let's dive in for a new playthrough of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Dear Henry, it seems like a lifetime since we worked on cartoons together. 30 years really slips away, doesn't it? If you're back in town, come visit the old workshop. There's something I need to show you. Your best pal, Joey Drew. Okay guys, so here we go. That's the note from Joey to Henry, of course, inviting him back to the studio one last time to see what he's been working on. Now, obviously Henry isn't going to be prepared for what he's about to find in this studio. And neither were we, of course, when we first played this game. All right, Joey. I'm here. Let's see if we can find what you wanted me to see. I remember playing the alpha for this game, guys, and just, you know, the sort of wonder that I had when I explored the studio, because the art style is just so cool and it's so eerie in here. But anyway, we're back in the old studio. As you can see, it's too quiet right now. There's the old Joey Drew Studio sign. This was very much updated from what it used to be when we originally played the game. Um, so let's proceed onwards. We need to find that uh, ink machine room to start with, so let's proceed on here. Dreams come true. Alice's favourite slogan, of course. And here we go towards the ink machine. There's the ink output schedule. Now, on this sign, you might notice down here, it's got TC Gent off. If you've ever followed my theories on the channel, and sort of character explanations, you'll know this is the name Thomas Connor, who was a Gent employee, and Gent with a company, of course, that built the ink machine for Joey Drew, and helped his sort of dream come to life. This lift could use a few dry cells. Right, let's power up the lift with the dry cells. There we go. Let's see what you're hiding down there, old friend. Should know by this sign it's probably not a good idea to continue, but never mind. And here, behold the ink machine as it rises from the depths of the studio. Quite an impressive contraption. I always find this scene quite chilling and uh, goosebumpy. It's got that kind of really nice little motif of music there. So there is the ink machine. We've got to find a way to sort of power it on though, so let's go this way. Of course, at this point, I know exactly what to do in the game. I'm not going to pretend like I don't know what's coming. So let's just follow this path around and we will find... Oh, the ink machine room. Here we go. But it's powered down currently. All right, how do I get this to work? So we've got to sort of figure out a way to power up the ink machine. We've got all these weird pedestals with sort of symbols next to them. Let's go and find the items to place on these pedestals to power up the ink machine. And hello, here's oh, Bendy. Here. That would be pretty creepy. I think this scare got me quite badly when I first played the game. But obviously now we're not faced by that. And here oh my God. Joey, what were you doing? is a rather chilling and creepy sight. A Boris clone strapped down, chest ripped open. We've of course got the... Um, sort of engineer tool here, the janitor tool, um, which is the wrench, or I should say spanner, hooked on him there. Which links the character in my mind to Wally Frank still. I'm still kind of convinced that Wally Frank's got ropes back here and became a Boris clone. But who knows. There's his uh, sort of handyman box as well with a bone in it. There are a lot of signs that point to Thomas Connor obviously being the Boris at the end of this game. And Wally Frank's potentially being a Boris as well. But there's also a lot of signs to a character called Buddy Lewick from the Bendy book, 
becoming Boris as well. So it's kind of like a mystery still to this day, but certainly the workers of the studio were being turned into these Boris clones, we know that much. Um, and it was Alice, of course, taking their hearts to try and become more human. And we find that out both later in this game and in the Boris and the Dark Survival, a sort of spin-off game where the whole Boris clone st being strapped down thing was sort of tied into gameplay. Let's check out now Wally's audio recording, listen to this character. At this point, I don't get what Joey's plan is for this company. The animation sure aren't being finished on time anymore, and I simply don't see why we need this machine. It's noisy, it's messy, and who needs that much ink anyway? Also, get this, Joey had each one of us donate something from our workstation. We put them on these little pedestals in the break room to help appease the gods, Joey says. Keep things going. I think he's lost his mind, but hey, he writes the checks. But I tell you what, if one more of these pipes burst, I'm out of here. So there we go, that's Wally Franks. Wally's one of my favourite characters. I think he's very much, you know, a sort of, he's a bit lazy and a bit hapless, but I think he's a good guy, you know, deep down. Bit of a temper on him sometimes, but overall, a good guy. So there we go, we've got the bendy plushie there. We've got to now go and get, I think, the cog, book, record, and inkwell. So we'll start by going all the way back to the beginning of the game. We can, of course, pick up the little uh, record there. If I can actually, can I get that? There we go. He will set us free. This is obviously somewhere where Sammy Lawrence would have worked from as the music director, even though, of course, his actual place of business is down in the floor below. We'll be going to that soon, which was the music department. I'm not going to be collecting all the bacon soups in this playthrough either, guys, just so you know, because that does take a long time, but you can do that if you want like, sort of an achievement at the end of the game. Looks like they knocked out a wall or two after I left. Guess it took a few people to replace me. Yeah, so obviously after Henry left, which I theorise is around 1930, that sort of time, Joey hired a whole team of artists into the studio to take over the workload from his old friend because Henry was doing a lot by the sound of it and it sort of burned him out a little bit. And as you can see, these artists brought Bendy to life after Henry left and continued Joey's legacy for many years to come. There's an interesting little thing here. We get the inkwell down here below the desk. If you look at this Bendy sketch, you may or may not know this. There's a little Easter egg. Look away from it, then turn back. Yeah, there you go, it changes. It took a little while to change then, but you can keep doing this. You can keep sort of walking around, coming back to it, and sometimes it will change the picture. And it's kind of like funny, but also a little creepy, but it changes. Come on, change one more time for me. There you go. So as you can see, that's a little Easter egg. You can keep making that change many, many, many times. So if you want to do that and play about with it in your own time, if you've got the game, then I would advise doing it. Hey, here's my old desk. I wasted so much time in this chair. I forgot I actually had this tool, guys. You can see it says he was born here. This is obviously where Henry first created Bendy. Despite Joey taking the credit for it, we believe that Henry did create Bendy, and I think that's a safe assumption at this point. So, Bendy was Henry's creation, but of course Joey turned down his initial concept of a much happier, cuter looking Bendy, and then went with this sort of now iconic design here. So there we go, that's Henry's origin sort of explained and covered there. And I did forget we had this tool. You can of course see that this is acquired after we finish the game and by playing through it again, we get all these secret messages. This one says, don't turn on the machine. I've been speculating these messages might be from the character Audrey who we're gonna play in the new game. But I don't, I don't know for sure, of course. It says, I'm sorry buddy here as well, which does again, Give some kind of credence to the idea that Boris is the character buddy Luwak, as he dies later on. I'm not going to check out all the secret messages guys, but I have made a video a few years ago about all these secret messages if you want to check out each and every one. For now, let's go down here. We need to um, get the book next. Might as well punch in and save our progress. Punching in. There we go, get the book. 
How about a little round of darts as well? I feel like that would be a kind of nice thing to do, just experience all sort of facets of a game. Oh, let's go a little bit higher. Can we get a bullseye? Almost. That's not so bad. I think we didn't do too badly there. Alright, let's go back upstairs and get the final item that we need, which should be the cog. And that should be in here, I believe. There okay, we go. That's all of them. Now all we need to do is head back and place them on the pedestals. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I just need to get the ink flowing somehow. Should be a switch around here somewhere. Then I can start up the main power. So now let's go and find the switch. Now the switch should be, I believe, down the hall here. Here's a little uh, easter egg for you as well. A bit of a jump scare that one as well. That actually got me quite badly the first time I ran into it. And so did this one. A little bendy cutout. So who's moving the bendies around? We don't know for sure, but speculation, safe speculation would be Sammy Lawrence. As you can see, there's a little ink block there where he could have disappeared into the wall. As we know he does, he often is seen carrying these bendy cutouts around. So it seems like Sammy is sort of stalking us already as we explore this studio. And there is a cute little animation of Bendy. Right, let's turn this ink pressure up. Get that machine working. And uh, as you can see, the pipes are kind of uh, bust in this place. Joey really needed to keep standards a bit higher around the studio in terms of health and safety there. So we're heading on back now guys to get this ink machine up and running. Should be all in place now to uh, power it up. There we go. It's running. I think a good thing to do is to go and find the Meatly secret next. I'm going to try and show you guys where all the secret hidden Meatly secrets are. Of course the Meatly is the developer uh, alongside Mike Mood, the key creators of Bendy franchise and his first secret is behind this little poster here of Boris. What the heck is this? And that is the Meatly and actually the guy that does the voice to Henry our character in this game is also the Meatly so that's kind of fun. So let's head on back of course it's time for the big reveal and look we got some footprints here and everybody still asks me to this day uh, what are these footprints? Who, you know, whose footprints are they? What's the story behind them? I did a video a while ago about them, but I kind of have had a slight change of heart since that video. But if you want to check out some of my old theories about what these footprints, uh, who they belong to and stuff, you can do that. But it's obviously somebody that's just been sort of born from the ink machine and has quickly boarded it up and sort of made their escape because they know what's coming from it. And we're about to discover who that is. It doesn't get me anymore, but that jump scare used to really terrify me. <laughs> and this is actually one of my favourite sequences of the game. I hope they have more stuff like this in Dark Revival. Like big set piece moments, we're running around. All hell's breaking loose, you know, the studio is collapsing. We've got to get out of here. So, we can't go that way. Let's head to the exit and get out. But unfortunately that floor, we have to watch that, you know, that little step there because we're now trapped down in the depths of the studio and there's no way back up to that exit. The only way is to press on down, but first we're going to listen to Thomas Connor's audio log. Like a dying dog in its last legs. Make no mistake, this place, this machine, 
Okay, so that's Thomas Connor. Obviously not happy that Joey hasn't been keeping up maintenance of his studio and it is quite dangerous. I mean, look at that drop we just had. Like, that's not cool. We could have broken our leg, but luckily we're in a cartoon world, so it's all good. Now we're going to have to head down and, you know, that sign is basically saying don't come down here. But what choice do we have, you know? So here we go, let's drain that ink. And this, again, was something that was very different. This area used to be a lot more simple than it is now. It's now thick in atmosphere. And they really improved the earlier levels of this game as development went on with the sort of remaster that they brought out, which is now obviously just the version of a game that everyone plays. Um, but at the time, it was called a remaster. And it, yeah, like it's a lot better than it was originally. Now this is interesting, this sign says the creator lied to us. If you use the secret tool on this sort of sign here, it says Joey lied to us. So very clearly shows that Joey was exploiting his workers for, you know, his ink machine experiments. He needed souls for his ink machine and he got them from his workers. This will definitely come in handy. The Faithful Axe, of course, the best weapon in the game by far. It is OP, but you know what, I don't care. I hope if it returns in Dark Revival, it's just as overpowered and just as uh, fun to use. And here we go. This is going to be the end of this video, guys. We're going into the ceremony ritual type room. And this is where chapter one is going to wrap. There we go, those foreboding visions that Henry experiences, and that is the end of Bendy Chapter 1. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video today. Obviously a revisit of Bendy and the Ink Machine. If you would enjoy seeing more of these videos, I will continue and do chapters 2 through 5 and replay the entire game again. But today I just wanted to put this video out there just as a little way to revisit the game and if it does well we will continue and finish up the rest of the game. So if you did enjoy the video today guys remember to leave a like on this video, comment down below, let me know what other horror games perhaps you would like to see me revisit as well as Bendy, perhaps some Little Nightmares, some of the Five Nights at Freddy's games, any games you guys would be interested in seeing me return to, just leave me a comment down below, let me know and if I get enough positive response to those messages then I will uh, sort of definitely consider it. Thanks for watching today's video, remember to subscribe to the channel if you have enjoyed it, and I will see you all on the next one.